Good morning, everyone. T Speaker 222 XRP Future Millionaire with the Side Bet on XLM and Future Digibyte OG. So, like I always tell you, now that we have the lines back out, let's break this out into the one minute. My lines are time tested and it will make you shit your pants time and time again. It will play between my lines like you've never seen. Then it drops down to the next levels. So, XRP. Is trying to make some moves. It's flip resistance back at 138 to support. Now it's actively trying to flip 144 back to support. If we do that, we turn back into that bullish trend. If we can be over the 144 line, we're bullish. And then it comes up to this. Top side of 152, bullish tendencies. Bottom side, bearish tendencies. Bottom side of 144, we're bearish, in my opinion. If we get over 144 and flip it to support again, we can push bullish and continue on our merry way. We break 152, we'll be over 160 and at 166 before you know it. So I keep saying this is a great spot, a great spot to buy XRP. If you're long holding it, why not? It's dropped from the top again on that little bounce down, you know? So I think what's going to happen is one of two things, guys. This is either going to be left shoulder, you know, the development of a head where it comes up, or, and I never say this part of it, but this is also a possibility, just based on these weird crashes and a way of manipulating the price, this is always a possibility. Let me get this stuff out of the way. Let's, let's look at this objectively. What if, what if 198 is the top? What if this is actually the head and then it comes up like this? But what if this right here is somehow the head? And because of these flash crashes, it just keeps getting pushed back down instead of making the head top. Sometimes you'll get patterns like this where it breaks up and comes down and the head is stuck in the middle below the shoulders. It's not uncommon. So that's one of two possibilities that's going to happen. I've shown you the other possibility where the head forms right here and it'll go up to 198. But what if? It's still going to go up. That's what I'm saying. You'll still get a push up on the shoulder. I'm not convinced that this is the pattern that's taking place. I'm saying the one other pattern that I keep showing you. But at the same time, this could be an inverted head. Or disguised within an inversion. But it's really in a head and shoulders still. This isn't uncommon. This happens a lot in a W pattern from a longer standing pattern. It can never get back up to the top. So the head looks inverted on the inside. Even though it's an upright head, it comes down inverted on the shoulders. And then when the right shoulder finishes, it comes crashing down, just like the other patterns. It's a possibility. You know? Uh, where are we at? XLM. Again, the levels that I use, guys, there's no... It's, it's incredible. It bounced over 158, used it as support, and it went right to 74 cents. There's nothing in between. You could, for the hell of it, put, I told you I wasn't going to put this down because when it rode, I, would, I wanted you guys to see it. But, you know, we can go and break it into the one minute. And when I say my lines are time tested, there's a reason I say that. See how it's hugging 65? It's trying to make that new support. That's where it's low enough to where it's like, you know what? We've got enough traction here, enough volume. But you see how it doesn't trade in between? I know my zones very well, and they're time tested. We can even, so let's pull this out to the four hour. It's very possible that I created the, the head on XLM, and then we're looking for the come down like we just had, and then a pullback, you know, to create the shoulder. Or that part of the head is going to come down and then we're creating just the right shoulder. There's many ways, but they're all going to end up the same. These patterns are all going to end up the same. And they're eventually going to come back down to retest their bottom part. So, DGB, 
you know, it, it tried to make a little tiny push up overnight, but it nothing much. But you can see, guys, when I say time tested lines, they travel between my lines. It's trying to make 12 4 support. It flipped it, and now it's on its way to make 13 5 active support. In between, we can put down the 12 9 line because that's what we had before because it would dick around in between, but it's not really much of a line, so I didn't really feel like putting it up. But it does have a history of dicking around at that spot. It always has. You can see when it's ready to flip 13, then it goes right to 13.5 and usually goes up to 14. That's supposed to be there and then we're supposed to have a 10.5, but there's also another line in between, but anyhow. So DGB, a great, great consolidating spot. I keep telling you for the long hold, every time these dip, buy them. DGB has been as high as 18 cents, 18 and a half cents. It's actively trying to make 13 cents support again. Actively. In the one minute. It flips that. We're going to 13.5 and ultimately 14.4 pretty quickly. 13 is just a staying point in the middle. It doesn't sit there for often. It'll go right up to 13.5, then reverse that. Come back up one more time and go. So, just something to look at. I expect DGB to have a nice little pull up now. Zill, very, very similar to DGB. The, both those patterns are identical. Identical. I mean, you could look back at this now and do this logically, and you'll see why. Oh, that's not right. You'll see why with Zill, if we would have measured it accurately, it barely came outside of that. It didn't even, for the for all technical purposes, it's still trading between the wedge. So you should expect a top side breakout at some point. Ether, I'm starting to gain some stuff back, but I'm not convinced that that's a HUD. But if that's the shoulder, it's going to come down like this. You know, you're going to have a come down. It's going to be, you know, and then something like that. Because it's going to have to start coming down on a pattern. But I think it's trying to move up another level, like my drawing indicates. Now... Litecoin, again, it pulled down. When Litecoin came down on this big fucking dump down here to three thirty-four, it was ten dollars under what I bought it. So I, I only had seventy-five dollars in my PayPal account. So I just threw it in there. At three point three four Litecoin at three forty-one or three forty-two. So it popped up a little bit overnight. So whatever. But now Doge, I told you guys, if you weren't ready to ride it to the forty-two cent line or the thirty-eight cent line. You know, there's a possibility that I could go down 38 cents. But I told you also that the best buying time was right where we were at when it was at 42 cents because that's the double bottom. Had a nice little push out to 54, but it got eaten up in that four hour very quickly. It started out bullish, but it's still showing bearish tendencies. It went back from having an extreme spike in volume, but it showed bullish tendencies by bouncing off the double bottom like I predicted. I predicted it to come back down there. It followed my channel beautifully. You know, we can go in the one minute and you can see what I'm talking about. Whoops. It traded within that zone the entire time until it bounced out of the wedge. And I made those predictions a long time. You know, it was a long ways back in the pattern. So... If you question the lines and the time-tested nature of them, I'm not a financial advisor, guys, so should you take my advice? No. But if you see something on the charts and it resonates with you or you're like, you know what? That's exactly what's happening. Well, then you got to make an informed decision. But like I always tell you guys, the only position that I'm truly good at is the long position. The only position that wins time and time again is the long position. So anything else is just me trying to show you interday trading. But at the end of the day, it's to be built on a long position. So, what you can expect from Doge, if this is a true confirmation of the double bottom, you know, if this actually doubled off, you can expect a nice push up. How high it goes, nobody knows. But what you also need to be aware of, like I said last night, is it the possibility that it's going to double bottom 38 cents that was from earlier in the pattern. And then it'll make its bounce. 
You know, that's the two possibilities here, and I want you to pay very, very close attention. So, guys, I'll keep you updated this afternoon. I got to go. Got stuff to do this morning, but T Speaker 222 XRP, Future Millionaire with the side bet on XLM and Future Digibyte OG. If you want to donate, links in the description. Besides that, pay very, very close attention to these patterns. And guys, don't buy when it's not in buy zones. Make sure you're paying attention to these buy zones. ADA overnight, similar to Zill, or similar to uh, kind of Doge. It double bottomed, and it's creating the same W formation. So we'll see with ADA, but I was telling you to buy at 158. This is technically still, this is kind of out of support now, but it's still in that support range, but it's so high now. We're at the top of the pad, and this is kind of like buying on the head and hoping and praying that it goes up. You kind of miss that opportunity with ADA at $1.57. So this is a very, very dangerous level to buy. But if you're on the long position, obviously you can build at every level. So until next time, guys, stay blessed. Speak at 222 XRP.